The dust has arrived across parts of the United States, and there's more on the way. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about the dust. We're going to track that secondary plume and where the current plume is right now. But first, I want to show you this new area of interest that has been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. It's meandering in the Atlantic, or eventually will. It's not yet developed, but we'll show you where that possibility of development is going to be. And then we're going to break down the Saharan dust. Part of it has worked into the southeast U.S. There's a thicker plume, though, entering into the Caribbean. We're going to break that down. Speaking of the Caribbean, there are a few more tropical waves entering. Development looks unlikely due to the fact we have a lot of dust in the Caribbean. But I'll show you that as we track those tropical waves to the Caribbean that could still bring some heavier rain to parts of the islands. Here is the development area again over the next two days. 0% shot for development. It's really once we get beyond the next 48 hours into that two to five day window where development is possible. We're going to be watching this little chunk northeast of Bermuda, this area organized, disorganized to showers and thunderstorms. Once it kind of meanders in this direction and drifts into that direction in this zone northeast of Bermuda in that yellow area, that is where we could have development over the next few days. Again, this one does not look like it's going to impact land. It might start to bring some rough surf to the Azores as we get towards the latter stages of this week. Nonetheless, this should leave everybody alone, but this could become our next name storm of the season, whether it becomes tropical or whether it becomes subtropical. The water temperatures in this area are really, really warm, so conducive for development in that regard. So we'll watch again, likely going to stay a fish storm. Nonetheless, this could become the next name storm of the season. I want to point where, out where it is right now. This is the spin. I always like to show this to you guys because this is the model when we start to pick up on that bright red ball. And well, that's what we're looking for. Notice we have this strung out like a string bean right here. Here is Bermuda. And then here is that little energy, if you will. And again, we're looking for that bright red ball. And you see it. That last couple of frames here, here's July 12th, so in a couple of days you see that little pop up. So it tries to get organized as it kind of interacts with another system, and then you see that spin. So now we got something going. There's the 13th into the 14th, and now we have this big storm out in the North Atlantic. The question will be, can it take on subtropical and tropical characteristics? I think the likelihood is that it does. Nonetheless, if this does happen... Dawn would be the next name storm of the 2023 hurricane season. So we'll watch that closely. Again, I think for the most part, this just impacts shipping channels and the fish and should stay away from land. But again, noteworthy nonetheless. We're going to keep our eyes on that one as we move forward in time. All right, the dust. It is here. We're tracking it. This is Monday, the current look at the dust. You see where the thick stuff is. Again, Puerto Rico, we are inundated with that thick stuff. ABC Islands, certainly the Leeward and Windward Islands, the Virgin Islands getting that really thick stuff. There's your scale up at the top there, the dense dust. Look at all this. Again, through the North Gulf Coast into Texas, into Florida. It's certainly not as thick. It's that lighter concentration, but just enough to get that particulate matter about 15 to 20,000 feet above your head and really help to refract the sunlight a little bit more so the enhancement of the sunrise and sunsets into the southeast and gulf coast likely underway I already saw some gorgeous pictures from florida early on the 10th of july and they looked awesome again helping to enhance the sunrise a little bit and we'll likely see that for the next few days before that thick stuff gets here now once it gets too thick you might start to have some air quality issues for sensitive groups. It helps to lower the storm chances and then eventually uh, will help to make the sunrise and sunset a little more milky. So you don't want it too thick. It's like that Goldilocks scenario. You need to be just right of the concentration there to get the perfect sunrise and sunset. All right, taking you forward to track that secondary plume. Over the next few days, again, there is that lighter white indicating where we have the thin dust. Watch what happens though as we get into the weekend. So here we go in Sunday. There's that really, really thick stuff. So again, heads up, San Antonio, Houston, back to New Orleans. That is where we start to get the real thick dust. And then as we get into the middle, even latter part of next week, there we go, 10 days from now. That's on July 20th. We're still under the influence there of that dust. Now, that is a good thing overall because it's going to tame the main development region of the Atlantic. That's where we had Brett and Cindy develop, and it's going to keep things relatively quiet. Look at where I showed you where we had the dust. Again, that was over Puerto Rico, over the Leeward Windward Islands, over the Virgin Islands. Look at that. Hardly a cloud in the sky through the Dominican Republic into Haiti, the Turks and Caicos. Nice and sunny right now. We do have a very weak tropical wave trying to push into the Caribbean. Again, that is likely going to get gobbled up by the dust. 
further east into the main development region, more of the same. Lots of clear skies going from the Lesser Antilles, which are right here. Again, the main development region highlights that zone from the Lesser Antilles to about the Cabo Verde Islands. That's where we see those long track storms develop once we get into July, the end of July, and then really August and early September through the peak of hurricane season. This is your main development region as I try to spell MDR. We talk about that a lot. And again, that's what we look forward to or look forward to, I should say. We don't look forward to development there. That's what we look for development once we get into the peak of hurricane season, really the months of August and September. That is the Cabo Verde season, as it's known. They're the Cabo Verde Islands, and those storms roll off of Africa, move into the main development region, and then given the right conditions, ocean temperature, dry air, the lack thereof, and um the wind shear being susceptible that's where we typically look for development once we get into august and september thank you so much guys for tuning in again if you found this content helpful please give it a thumbs up if you want to stay updated on all things hurricane season all things weather you have to hit subscribe please do that and we will catch you next time